It doesn't matter if you are a leader in your region or not. Even the most brilliant inventors are unable to influence certain things in our lives. For example, the fact that we produce huge amounts of garbage. Singapore's ever-growing population and thriving economy have resulted in a seven-fold increase in solid waste in half a century. If in 1970 it was 1,260 tons per day, then in the year 2021 it is already 8,741 tons. And nobody is able to stop this wave of garbage. Over the past 15 years, the amount of plastic waste per capita has increased by 20%. But Singapore wouldn't be Singapore if they didn't come up with ingenious and effective solutions. How does the country get rid of waste? And why is the landfill in Singapore covered not with a pile of garbage, but with greenery? Did you know that in 2019, 59% of all solid waste was recycled in Singapore? If you are interested in how things are in other countries, then at best, this figure is half that. How is the recycling process in Singapore? The garbage sorted by residents goes to collection points where waste is additionally checked, and they decide what can be recycled. We are talking about plastic, metal, and glass. The rest is sent to incinerators. Singapore chose this method because it reduces waste by 90%. And what better way for a country where land and area are the main values? Singapore has four incinerators. The largest is 2S1, which was relaunched in 2022. After the renovation, its efficiency increased by 20%. The capacity is 3,600 tons of processed waste per day. This is more than a million tons of garbage annually. Every day, more than 600 garbage trucks arrive at the plant, the waste from which falls into special bins. By the way, the pressure in them is below atmospheric, so that the unpleasant smell does not go outside. Next, the waste goes to crushers so that recycling is as efficient as possible. Garbage is burned at a temperature of 800 to 1000 degrees Celsius. The resulting ash after cooling passes through magnetic separators. They separate metal impurities that can be recycled. Does this affect air quality? Singapore says no. The plant has an efficient gas purification system, including electrostatic and catalytic filters. This allows for the removal of dust and harmful substances. The heat after the combustion of garbage is used to heat water. The steam drives turbine generators to produce electricity. The plant not only feeds itself, 80% of the generated electricity is given to the external network. By the way, here is an interesting fact. All of Singapore's incinerators produce up to 3% of the electricity the country needs. Not so much, but still a good bonus from the garbage disposal, right? What happens next? The ash and 41% of waste that cannot be incinerated go to the Tuas Marine Transfer Station. This is an intermediate point before garbage is sent to the country's only landfill for waste. Everything is organized as efficiently as possible. Trucks drive up to the unloading areas and dump the waste directly into the center of the barge. Excavators standing on the other side distribute it over the entire area. At the end of the day, the roofs of the barges are closed to keep debris from blowing away. After all, there are 33 kilometers by the sea ahead to the landfill on the island of Semakau. It is, however, unlikely that you will call it a landfill if you get here. Mangroves, flocks of birds, fish in the water, and no stench. This is such an unusual landfill that the Singapore authorities conducted tours here for those who wish, and some even call it the Garbage of Eden. How was this achieved? To begin with, all of Singapore's landfills were closed in 1999 and replaced by a single Simacau landfill. This is an island of 350 hectares which is being built from waste. How? Not so long ago, we discussed the grandiose land reclamation projects, as a result of which the area of Singapore has grown by 27%. Simacau is one such example worth $1 billion. To understand how everything works here, imagine a slice of orange. The ring from the orange skin is a 7-meter wall that was erected to separate part of the water from the rest of the sea. The remaining slices are water into which solid waste is gradually dumped. 
not randomly but gradually slice by slice. Each cell as well as the outer wall are reinforced with membrane materials to prevent pollution from leaking into the open sea. But while each slice is not used for waste disposal, it is connected to the sea by pipes so that the water circulates and does not stagnate. When a new cell is needed, the pipes are sealed. Upon arrival at the Semakau landfill, the barge with ash and garbage docks in a closed building. Excavators unload the solid waste from the barge into dump trucks, which go to the active cell and dump the debris. When the cell is completely filled, bulldozers and road wheels level the surface, and from above, the garbage is covered with a layer of earth. Thanks to a thoughtful approach, mangroves and other flora begin to grow very quickly on sealed cells, thus making the island look more like a green park than a landfill. Air, water, and land are constantly monitored for contamination. Ecologists enthusiastically list the unique plants and animal species that live around Semakau. Coral reefs nearby do not feel threatened and the inhabitants of the country come here for recreation and fishing. Nevertheless, there is one drawback. The capacity of Semakau will last until 2035. And this is the only landfill in the country in case you forgot. However, this is Singapore, they prefer to be proactive. Now the country is implementing the so-called Towards Zero Waste concept. Globally, it implies the creation of a circular economy. Among the specific goals is to reduce the amount of waste that ends up on Semakau by 30% by 2030. This will extend the life of the landfill by another 10 years until 2045. But there are other interesting ideas within the Towards Zero Waste project. For instance, the new sand. These are heavier fractions of ash from the combustion of garbage, which are proposed to be used as an additional building material. So far, its properties and applications are being studied, as it should not harm the environment, especially Singapore's water resources. Meanwhile, a footpath has been built from new sand in one of the coastal regions of the country and a bench has been created using 3D printing technology. But in the future, more serious decisions await us. The second project involves reducing the amount of cardboard waste. Their main source is product packaging in the field of e-commerce. About 200,000 parcels of goods from various platforms are delivered to Singapore every day and by 2025, their number is projected to grow by another 50%. Thus, in 2022, a pilot project was launched for reusable packaging, which can either be immediately given back to the courier or returned to collection points. Considering that cardboard makes up about 7% of all waste in the country, this may really help. Singaporeans do not forget to reduce the amount of single-use packaging used. The BYO Bring Your Own Initiative encourages the use of reusable bags, packaging, as well as other reusable containers when shopping in stores. The project claims that in four months of 2022, 2.5 million fewer single-use plastic products were used in the country than a year earlier. Did you know that the richest countries in the world produce the most garbage? The wealthiest 16% of the world's population is responsible for 34% of the world's garbage. The poorest countries in the world, in which 9% of the world's population lives, produce only 5% of the total waste. That is, when both a country and its population begin to grow rich, there is more garbage. And if we do not apply effective recycling and processing technologies, then we will simply drown in it. Therefore, Singapore's experience is definitely worthy of attention, especially in countries with a coastline.